Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, I tried a new recipe for creamy pesto pasta. I had about a half a jar of pesto in my fridge that I needed to use up, and I saw this pasta on Taylor Elmore's channel. It's been a while, but I've had it um, pinned, and so I figured this was a great time to make this and use up that pesto. All right, so to get started, I decided to marinate the chicken. You don't have to do this at all. I just had a bottle of this light um, Caesar vinaigrette in my fridge that I wanted to use up. So so I marinated the chicken overnight, but again, you can just season it however you would prefer. To go along with the pasta, I decided to make these Cheddar Bay Biscuits. I bought this box a few months ago at Sam's Club. It was a really great deal, but I've got to start working through this box. So I'm just going to cook these up according to the package instructions. And I'm also gonna make some side salads. So here I've got some lettuce, some croutons left over from the Caesar salads I made a few nights ago, some chopped up tomatoes, mushrooms, cucumber. We've got some shredded cheddar cheese, bacon crumbles, some sprouts, um, this little container of like salad toppings, and then I've got some homemade ranch dressing. Now for the pasta and the chicken. So in the skillet, I've got a little bit of oil and butter. It's on about medium high heat. Once it's hot, I'm gonna add in the chicken that I drained the marinade off of. I'm gonna season that chicken with some salt and pepper and then just cook it until it's cooked all the way through, which is at least 165 degrees. Once it's there, I'm going to remove it to a separate plate and set it aside and make the sauce. So to the skillet, same skillet, I just added in some chopped up sun-dried tomatoes. I'm gonna add in a couple tablespoons of butter, give that a stir and then cook that just for a few seconds. And then I'm gonna add in some heavy whipping cream and give that a stir. Next, I'm gonna add in the pesto. I got this at the Dollar Tree, but use your favorite brand or of course use homemade. I started out by adding a couple heaping spoonfuls and just add the pesto to taste. Um, I think you'll see me go back later and give the sauce a taste and I add in a little more pesto. So I'm going to stir in that pesto and then reduce the heat to a simmer and cook this until the heavy cream begins to thicken. Next, I'm going to add in some Parmesan cheese. I had just a little bit of freshly grated from the Caesar salads I made, and then I had some of this pre-bagged, pre-shredded. So I'm going to stir that in and then season it to taste with salt and pepper, and then you saw me add in a little more um, of that pesto as well. So once I'm happy with the sauce, I'm going to add the chicken back in and then add in my cooked pasta. You could use whatever kind of pasta you like. I just cooked up some rotini according to the package instructions. I'm going to stir that until it's combined really well and then I cooked this for just a couple minutes to allow everything to heat and that cheese to completely melt. And here is the finished pasta and then we've got those Cheddar Bay Biscuits. These are so, so good. And then here are the finished plates. So we've got some of the pasta. I just garnished it with some fresh basil. We have the side salads. My husband decided that he wanted Thousand Island instead of the homemade ranch dressing. And then we have the Cheddar Bay Biscuits. This was delicious. Everything was so good. The salad was good. The Cheddar Bay Biscuits were delicious. And that pasta was so, so yummy. For dinner the next night, I tried another new recipe. So a few months ago, I got just a really thin, cheap sirloin steak on Markdown at Food Lion. It's been in my freezer and I wanted to use it up and I thought this Mongolian beef would be a great way to use that. So that's what I decided to make for dinner this night and it was really, really good. I'll have the recipe linked down below. To go along with the Mongolian beef, I'm going to cook up these egg rolls. I got these from Sam's Club. I'm just gonna cook them in the air fryer and then serve this sweet and sour sauce. This is just the Kroger brand with the egg rolls for dipping. And then for the rice, I have this Trader Joe's brown rice. It's um, frozen and you just microwave it for a few minutes. We really, really like this brown rice. Uh, to be honest, we're not huge fans of brown rice normally, but this particular Trader Joe's brown rice is really, really good and it's really convenient. Like I said you just keep it in the freezer and pop it in the microwave 
I've got this skillet over medium high heat and I've got oil in it coming to temperature. In this Ziploc bag, I have the sirloin steak that I sliced thinly. Now, I think the recipe calls for flank steak, which you can totally use because I just had this sirloin on hand. Um, and then the recipe says to toss the steak with cornstarch. I was all out of it, um, and so I decided to use all-purpose flour. I wasn't sure if it would turn out okay, but it, it turned out just fine. So I tossed the steak with the cornstarch, or the flour in my case, and then in batches, I am going to... Um, um, just sear the steak on both sides now don't worry about cooking it all the way through at this point you just want to sear it and you do want to make sure that you do it in batches so that the steak sears and it doesn't just steam to the same skillet i'm going to add in my ginger garlic and red pepper flakes and as you can see here the skillet was really hot that ginger started uh, popping all over the place i should have let my skillet uh, cool down a little bit more but that's okay i just moved it off of the burner i am going to cook the ginger and garlic for just about 10 or 15 seconds and then add in the soy sauce the water and sugar i'm going to bring that to a boil and then add my steak back in, give it a stir, and then this is just gonna simmer. It doesn't need to simmer very long at all, just maybe 30 seconds or a minute until your sauce gets thickened. Now, a quick note here, I used half the amount of steak that the recipe calls for, but I went ahead and made the whole um, sauce because we like extra sauce to kind of drizzle over our rice. So once I've added that steak back in and the sauce has thickened, that's pretty much it. You're going to turn off the heat and then we are going to get it served up all right and here are the finished egg rolls again i just cooked them according to the package instructions in the air fryer and then here are the plates so i laid down some of the brown rice added the mongolian beef with some of the sauce garnished it with some chopped green onions as well as sesame seeds and then we have the egg rolls and the sweet and sour sauce dinner was delicious this recipe for mongolian beef was easy and it was super quick it took like no time at all so i recommend you all give this a try again the recipe will be down in the description box below For dinner the next night, I really didn't feel like cooking, so we just did a yo-yo night or you're on your own. For whatever reason, scrambled eggs and toast sounded really good to me, so I made some scrambled eggs, put the toast in the toaster, and then for my toast, this might sound a little bit weird, um, but I've done this pretty much my whole life, and it's one of my favorite breakfasts or snacks, is I make like a toasted peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So I toast the bread in the toaster. When it comes out, I add the peanut butter. Now, I like to add a little bit of creamy and a little bit of crunchy, and then I add my jelly, and then I just put it together like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It might be weird, but it's really good. I love it. So my husband was at the gym during dinner time. When he came home, I just whipped together this quick quesadilla for him. We had some leftover Philly cheesesteak meat from uh, when I made that a few nights ago. So I just warmed it up in the microwave, added it to a tortilla with a little bit of shredded cheese, and then just toasted the quesadilla up. And that was our dinner this night. I had a pre-cooked ham in my freezer that I wanted to use up, so I decided to make it this night. I just thought it. I've shared how I make my ham many times before on my channel. I don't really follow a recipe. Basically, what I do is I just combine brown sugar, honey, a little bit of Dijon mustard, and then either a little bit of water or pineapple juice. You could also use soda. I combine that, I brush it on the ham, and then for this particular ham, it was pre-cooked, like I said, so all I did was cook this covered in a preheated 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes or so. For one of my sides, I made au gratin potatoes. I've shared this before on my channel. I'll link the video down below. I use the recipe from Crouton Cracker Jacks. I'll just go over it really quickly, but if you want detailed instructions, like I said, go check out that video. Here I have some russet potatoes that I sliced thinly with a mandolin. I'm going to par cook them in some boiling water. You don't have to do this, but it really cuts down on the cooking time for the potatoes. Once the potatoes are cooked and drained, I'm going to put together the cheese sauce and then just layer the potatoes and the cheese in a grease casserole dish. And then this bakes at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes or so. All right, here is the finished ham. And then I warmed up some of the leftover Cheddar Bay biscuits that we had a couple nights before. And then we've got the au gratin potatoes. I just added a little bit of parsley flakes on top for a garnish. And then I sauteed, or not sauteed, rather, I cooked some asparagus in the air fryer. Just toss it with some olive oil, salt, pepper, and garlic.
All right, here are the finished plates. So we have the ham, the potatoes, the asparagus, and the biscuits. This dinner was delicious. So yummy, so comforting. For dinner this next night, I made stuffed zucchini boats. I did not follow a recipe, but let me show you how I made these. So in this grease casserole dish, I have a couple of zucchini squash that I cut in half and just scoop the insides out. And don't worry, I saved that that I'll use for another um, recipe at a later date. To the squash, I added just a little bit of olive oil and then I seasoned it with some salt, pepper, and some of the Kinder's uh, buttery steakhouse seasoning. I popped these into the oven and cooked them at 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes or so. You want to cook them until they start to get tender. How long that takes really depends on how big your zucchini are. While the zucchini cooks, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the sauce. So in this skillet here, I have some lean ground beef that I've browned up along with some chopped onions, garlic, and mushrooms, salt and pepper. I'm going to add in this jar of Rao's marinara sauce and then this packet of McCormick thick and zesty spaghetti seasoning. I'm gonna stir that until it's combined really well and then just allow that to simmer on low while the zucchini finishes cooking. And I forgot to mention real quick, I also added in some fresh chopped basil to the sauce. All right, so once the zucchini par cooks, you'll see that there's a little bit of water or liquid in the bottom of the zucchini. I just tilt them and pour that liquid out. I added some of the sauce and then topped that with some shredded mozzarella cheese and just a little bit of cheddar. I just wanted to use it up and add a little bit of color to it. I placed this back into the oven and cooked it for another 12 or 15 minutes until the zucchini is tender and the cheese is melted. All right, and here is my plate. My husband was at the gym this night, so he ate later, but I've got the zucchini boat. I did garnish it with a little more of that fresh chopped basil and then made a big side salad, and that was dinner this night. I use probably less than half of that spaghetti sauce, though, for these boats, so I just packaged it up, put it in the freezer, and then I'll have it, you know, for a quick dinner one night. For dinner the next night, we had my two youngest siblings with us. They are 16 and 13, turning 14. I decided to make some pigs in a blanket. So for the pigs in a blanket, I'm using the Little Smokies, the cheddar, and then some crescent rolls. I just cut the crescent rolls into pieces, wrap them around the Little Smokies, place them onto a grease baking sheet. Um, I decided to add some everything but the bagel seasoning to just a few. My husband really likes that seasoning, and I thought he might like it on these. So I just baked them in the oven at, I think it was 375 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes until they're golden brown. For the side, I just decided to make some quick box mac and cheese. I've mentioned before, but we really like the cauliflower from Kraft. I'm just going to cook it according to the package instructions. And then I like to add in a slice or two of American cheese when I make like box macaroni and cheese. I just feel like it makes it more creamy and it also gives it a more real cheese taste um you know as opposed to like the powdered cheese packets if that makes sense and then for the pigs in a blanket i set out some barbecue sauce ketchup and mustard so that you know if anybody wanted to dip their pigs in a blanket in that they would have that here are the finished pigs in a blanket and here is that finished macaroni and cheese so creamy and cheesy And then for the other side, I just set out some fresh veggies. We've got celery, baby carrots, broccoli, and cucumbers, along with some ranch. Everyone was given instructions, including the hubby, that they had to take vegetables. There was a vegetable there that everybody liked, so there was no excuses not to eat a vegetable. All right, here is my plate. So I've got some veggies, the mac and cheese, and the pigs in a blanket. Such an easy, simple dinner, but really, really yummy. Now, I've mentioned before on my channel that when my siblings come over, I normally ask them if there's anything in particular that they want me to cook for them. And they were over a few weeks ago, and my sister requested chicken tacos and copycat uh, Taco Bell cheesy fiesta potatoes. And we made that, but my little brother had requested French toast, and we didn't get around to making it, so I wanted to make sure that we made it this time. So let me show you how I put this together real quick. I'm first going to get the meat started. I got this ripe bacon on sale at Kroger a few weeks ago, and I'm just going to cook that in the oven and then cook up these maple sausage patties in a skillet on top of the stove. For the bread, you can use whatever kind of bread you want for French toast. I'm using this cinnamon swirl bread. 
in this container here I just have some eggs milk a little bit of cinnamon I didn't really add a whole lot um, because I'm using the cinnamon bread as well as the sugar I added just a couple pinches of sugar not a lot because again they're you know the bread's a little bit on the sweet side a dash of vanilla and then I whisk that up really well and I'm just going to dip the bread into the egg mixture and then cook it in a skillet with a little bit of butter until it is cooked on both sides I'm also going to make some scrambled eggs. So here I've got eggs that I whisked together with some milk, salt, pepper, and Tony Satchery's. I'm going to cook them on about medium heat in a skillet with a little bit of butter until they're cooked to my liking. I removed some of the eggs for myself. I don't prefer cheese on my scrambled eggs. And then I added some cheese to the rest of the eggs for everyone else. All right, here is the finished French toast. And then we have the um, bacon and sausage. I went ahead and cooked both packages and made quite a bit of scrambled eggs so that we could just warm it up for breakfast the next morning and I didn't have to cook again for breakfast. <laughs> and then here's what we're gonna have along with the French toast. I have some fresh fruit, butter, some syrup, and then a little bit of powdered sugar as well as some hot sauce and ketchup for the scrambled eggs. All right, here is a picture of my plate. So I have some of the French toast, a slice of bacon, a piece of sausage, some eggs, some strawberries, and then I did add just a little bit of syrup to my French toast before eating. This was delicious. I love making French toast out of like that swirl bread. It gives it so much flavor. All right, that is it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you liked this video and got some dinner inspiration from it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.